Hey guys, so in this brief video, I'm going to show you guys um, the Pandas TA library. Um, it's basically a library that has like a way to compute like 130 plus indicators. And just to show you guys a few examples, like you have all these um, uh, indicators, like momentum indicators, you have uh, MACD, moving average convergence divergence, you have the RSI, relative strength index, you have the slope, things people use, you even have the squeeze by John Carter's book, um, uh, The uh, Art of the Trade, which is a really good book. You have all these candle uh, uh, candle patterns, and you can compute all these things. You have um, uh, also statistics, like skew and things like that, trend indicators, um, and things like that. So I, I wanna just show you guys um, basically how to compute them in a big picture. There's also a thing called strategy, which allows you to compute many of these indicators at one. And by default, it uses multiprocessing to make it faster. But I will say during live trading, you, you need to disable multiprocessing because the overhead in multiprocessing is enough to mess up your algorithm, especially if your algorithm is run like on a second type level. So anyways, um, let's talk about this. So let me load a data frame of daily Tesla prices. And this ugly code here is just because there is one day where um, the data I downloaded somehow didn't account for the stock split. So here I'm dividing the prices by three. Um, I guess I have a bug here. There should be DF.load divided by three, DF.open divided by three, and the DF.high uh, divided by three. And uh, the volume I multiply by three because if it's a third the price, you need to multiply, in the stock split, you need to multiply the volume by three. But anyways, you have this data frame uh, for Tesla on a daily level. And the most important thing is there's open, high, low, close, and volume. Okay. So let me show you first the basics and how to use this library. It's an extension. So you import pandas TA as TA, and you can do something like this, df.ta, RSI, and then what you fill the parameters here. If you don't do anything, you get the default. But let's say I want to do RSI 14. I think it equals 14. This will be RSI 14. Um, and let's say I want to see I do a hammer candle, right? I want like a, a candle pattern, right? I can do a DFTA dot um, candlestick patterns, uh, candle patterns, and then um, name, what's the name of the pattern? We'll call it hammer. So you get a hammer and it, it, and it's, it takes a value of, uh, it's gonna take a value of uh, zero or 100. 100 means it is a hammer and zero it's not. Um, so, uh, um, as you see, like the distribution is like, most of them are not hammer canners, but some are, um, and another example is some of the, some of the things return more than one value, like Bollinger bands, for example. So you can have df.ta.d bands, and then you have the length, let's say length equals 20, um, STD, let's make it like three, three bands. So you get like Bollinger band, uh, with a moving average of 20 and, um, You'll have the lower band, this 182. This is the medium band, 216. The upper band is 250. And here, here's just the ratio, like how far are you towards either band? Uh, uh, and so if you're above one, you're, you're above the upper band. And if you're below zero, you're below the lower band. And um, yeah, so those are the, I guess, the f uh, most important columns. Um, and I wanted to say like, um, so I wanted to show like an example of how you can compute all these indicators together at once. So there's a thing called strategy. So a strategy, um, you basically, what do you do is you define um, the kind of indicator, let's say uh, uh, SMA, uh, and then you add the parameters after like length um, and Bollinger bands, you have the length, RSI. If you, if you want to use the default, you don't have to add length. Uh, MACD, you have the fast and slow parameters. And then candlestick patterns, let's do doji here. So you just do tf.ta.strategy, custom strategy, and it adds these indicators all computed um, to the end of your data frame, right? So I just wanna say that by default, the strategy uses multiprocessing, but the latency in multiprocessing actually is pretty high. So it's, it's actually better to, um, when you're applying the model to, to um, disable multiprocessing. So instead, if we can just like um, re-get our data frame, DF, instead, like when you're applying the model, you should do DF 
dot uh, uh, ta dot co cores equals none. This uses one core, and now you can do df dot uh, strategy like this, um, and this is using no cores. So like, basically, uh, let me just make sure it's right. Multiprocessing. Um, if you want to set this to zero, sorry. So you need to set it to zero actually. So tf at ta that cores equals zero. Yeah. So this is what you need. You need it to zero, not to none. So like set ta dot cores equals zero to disable. And this is important because um, you'll see that um, for small data sets, uh, you really need to disable this because the overhead is just too much. But like for a giant data set, you really want it. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, again, this is just uh, to get you ready for some of the machine learning stuff.